There was a time when uh, science had figured out that a human could not cover a mile in under four minutes. The legs could not move fast enough. So everybody accepted that until Roger Bannister did it. And once it had been done, within a couple of years, all of the other milers were running four minute miles. He had broken that psychological barrier by doing it. So I'm hoping that breaking that psychological barrier that you have to deteriorate as you age, that fear of aging, you don't have to fear it, control it. Hope is 14. She's having more and more problems walking. Other than that, her health seems to be good. She's my eighth dog. I believe that all creatures, all living creatures, are born with the, the right, the inalienable right of freedom. Freedom to live our own life in our own way in our own environment, making our own decisions. Every creature, I believe we're all, all equal. And I didn't believe that before I met Jimmy. Most people have a problem becoming a vegan or stopping eating meat, but because of how I want to live in this world and how I want to treat other creatures, I have to be a vegan. In order for me to eat meat, I would have to change all of my other beliefs. Turned 50 and I got training sessions with Jim, just trying to get back in the shape. In my time with Jim, it's like therapy for me. You know, he takes the place of a therapist, both physically and mentally, you know, because you start something and you gotta get this train of thought going and you gotta work it out and then at the end, it's like you come to some sort of resolution about it or some kind of motivation to do something else about it, you know. I'm like the majority of people, I think, and that well, I'm not a vegan, I probably would like to be. It takes a strong person to change like that. I like that kind of challenge. Yeah, I know. I get all fun. <laughs> <laughs> Just to see, you know, can I do it? Yeah, oh, yeah. Others can't do it, can I do it? Yeah. I like that. My name is John. I'm also known as the Badass Vegan. I'm here in Venice Beach uh, in honor of a good, good friend of mine, Mr. Jim Morris. I'm here to celebrate his history of what he's done and how he's inspired me and so many people throughout the industry as well as just people looking to get in shape and live a healthier life. I got into this sport in the 90s, early 2000s, vegan bodybuilding. I was looking for other people, I was looking for role models, I couldn't find them. I, uh, even in the internet age, it was hard to find people that were doing this. I just heard of Jim a few years ago. He literally was the person I thought he would be. Uh, humble, easygoing, very upfront. He doesn't hide anything. So it was real good to see that, you know, I have this, uh, 77 year old twin out there. <laughs> he has this really, from a bodybuilding standpoint, unbelievable resume. I mean, competing back with Arnold and competing with some of the legends of the sport, and when you look at his physique, not only for his age, but when you look at in his prime, he had one of the best physiques on the planet. And not only that, he was actually one of the early guys, one of the pioneers. But looking at, at Jim, you almost have to wonder, why didn't we hear more about Jim? The high point of my career was the Mr. America contest. I won the Mr. America contest with a winning margin of 30 points. Prior to that, the record had been 21 points, and it had been set by the first Mr. America, and it had lasted for 39 years. When I won it, I actually set three records. One, the largest point margin, the only openly gay person ever to win, and at 37, the oldest person to win. The next oldest person was 35, and all three of those records still stand. At that point, I had been training for 18 years. The Miss America contest was one of the worst uh, 
disasters in my life. When I won the contest that night, standing up there on the stage being booed, horrible experience. The magazines put into question not only the the 30 point margin, but whether I should have won at all. When the final scoring was announced to the audience that night, the whole thing didn't jive. It's virtually impossible for any man to be that far ahead of others. In the entire body of this contest, he never mentioned my name one time. The winner of the Mr. America always, always appeared on the cover of the magazine that reported the contest. I have never been on any cover of a magazine as Mr. America. I'm still dealing with the Mr. America win, and that's my motivation. When I go into training, I have to put everything out of my mind, whatever's going on in the world, whatever's going on in my life, just sort of drifts away. And uh, I enter this state of being in training, which is the closest I ever have been to being in bliss. For me, bodybuilding is a, it's a creative outlet. I create what I feel is an example of what's possible at a particular age or a particular point in time. When you look at him throughout his progression, as he aged, just looking at age 61, the photos, at 72, 77, I mean, it's, it's an unbelievable testament to a number of things, work ethic, dedication, desire, and you could argue healthy living, I mean a healthy approach in a sport where a lot of guys don't make it past 40, 50, 60 with good health. No matter what his age may be, he's young and you can see it, like you can see it the way he talks to you, his laughter, his smile, he's not, he's not your normal 77 year old like we talked about. He's dispelling the myth of, you know, 77 years old and you're not supposed to be, you know, working out and be ripped up and live a healthy lifestyle, you're supposed to be on medication and have all these people taking care of you, you know, and that's not the way it's supposed to be, it's just the fact that that's the normal thing right now. Bodybuilding, just, just, just like the rest of our world has gotten, you know, it's like a PhD knowing more and more of, about less and less, you know, that's oh, right. you know, uh, that's what has happened to our world as it's become specialized. If you're a weightlifter, you've got a weightlifting magazine, if there's powerlifting, it's a powerlifting magazine, if you got a a health magazine, it's, it's a health magazine, yet Iron Man in the 50s and 60s especially were all of those things because Perry saw this in a global view that all of the pieces, the exercise, the diet, the mental attitude, all of these things are all part of a whole. I've been vegan now for 12, 13 years. Before, I wasn't interested in getting other people involved. I didn't feel then that uh, anything I had to say would change people's feelings or attitudes about animals. And now I, I do. The nutritional part of my life has kept me healthy enough that I am at a point right now that I'm able to get into shape. I don't think that I would be in this shape and healthy enough to pull it back together again had I continued eating the way I was eating. I have another month in, in order to achieve the, the look I want. Um, and I, I feel like I'm right on schedule. The, the muscles have uh, sort of plumped up <laughs> uh, with uh, that 10 pound gain.
plus uh, I'm a lot leaner than I was at 176. I, I have a vision and image in here of what I want to end up looking like. I feel good about my, my workouts. Uh, I'm excited to, to go in and do them. And they take me about, about an hour. asking a personal question. How old are you? 76. I'll be 77 Friday. Oh my god. 77? Yeah. Yes. Where, how do you maintain those muscles? Well, Doesn't happen at your age. <laughs> I'm, I, I do what everybody knows, but they don't do. Ah. I pay attention to what I eat. Most important. I, yeah, I get exercise. And I keep my activity level up. Oh. And I keep the stress levels down. That's it, those three things. The magic words. Jim, with those muscles, you must get attention. Yeah, I, I get attention from mostly women. Oh, so, yes, yes. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. The women like the muscles. <laughs> We're here at the shoot for the People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals. When I was contacted by Peter, uh, very, very glad. A lot of people, once they find out that I'm vegan, ask, well, how can you maintain, how can you get enough protein, and how can you have strength and, and, and endurance and, and all of that? So uh, I think their campaign is going to really expose a lot of people to the benefits of veganism. Even though I won, Mr. America, I never got the credit. It's better that it happens now because I probably wouldn't have stayed in shape. It's so much more satisfying, gratifying to me now that I can make a difference in people's lives. It's that staying in shape, that lifelong fitness that I have to offer.